What's up, everybody? I'm former quarterback Malik Rozier, and if football, sports interviews, and having a good time interests you, then make sure to click the like and subscribe button as it really does help support this channel, and it also makes sure that you guys never miss a new video. How's everyone doing? I'm your host, Malik Rozier, and we're just going to jump right in. So this first section is called College News, and the real reason why I call it this is this is not only going to, going to be about Miami, but it's going to be about all colleges throughout, obviously, the U.S. So the first one I want to talk about is USC with the addition of Cliff Kingsbury. Obviously, everyone knows how good Lincoln Riley is, you know, with Caleb Williams, but now that you're having Cliff there, that guy's a brainiac. He obviously knows quarterback play. And he's been in the NFL. So you're talking about elevating a quarterback's game and now also not only elevating his, but also, you know, the skilled players around them. I know they um, signed Zachariah Branch, where I think that guy is going to be unreal for them as a, as a true freshman. And then obviously you have Malachi Nelson. You know, I had the pleasure of being with him two years ago at the Rivals camp in L.A. And that guy's really good. He has the size. He seems to have the, you know, the composure. Um, and I think he's going to explode when he gets his chance to start at USC. So next one, go over the top four you know, spring games that I'm really looking forward to. Number one is Alabama. I, I'm very interested in Jalen Milrow, and it, it even Todd Simpson, the backup. I think that guy's really good. The next one is going to be Georgia. I'm very interested in Carson Beck. When I was at Georgia, Carson Beck had great fundamentals. He was a smart kid, worked hard. So, you know, I think it's his year to shine. So I'm super interested, you know, to see over these last couple of years, how has everything kind of come together? Next is going to be Colorado. Obviously, you know, Dion's there. He has his son there. There's Travis Hunter. There's Kamani McClain. You no, know, there are some talented pieces, but at the end of the day, those guys got to win. And and no knock on Colorado, but there were a couple of clips where the competition didn't seem to be the best. And so I am super interested, you know, to see when they're out there versus good competition, which I definitely think there are. You know, when you're talking about going against Kamani McClain at, on, on the defensive side and Travis Hunter on the defense side as a receiver, you're obviously going to get better. But I also think that. You know, Colorado has a couple weak spots that it'll take a couple years for Dion to overcome. But, you know, I am very interested in Dion. I hope Dion, you know, balls out in the Pac-12. But I think that there's going to be a couple years until he gets that program to where he wants it. Next and last is going to be University of Miami. You know, we added a new offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator. Um, we got Tyler Van Dyke coming back. I love to see, you know, what's coming out of the new quarterbacks. We, you know, Jakari Brown and Emory, the young guys, they're balling out. And so those are the big four that I'm really looking forward to. There's obviously a couple others like TCU. You know, I've been looking at Ohio State with Kyle McCord. But for me, the top four are definitely Alabama, Georgia, Colorado, and the University of Miami. So now we're going to go over my top five quarterbacks currently. And, and the first two have an order after that. They're kind of, you know, Mitch and match, and you can argue their points. But number one is Caleb Williams. Number two is Drake May. I don't see anyone, you know, really going above those guys next to me. Is Sam Hartman. I know he's a little undersized when you watch him at Wake Forest. And now the fact that he's at Notre Dame with some more talented guys and a better defense, I think that he'll have a better year this year. And I'm super excited to see him play. Jaden Daniels from LSU was unreal this year. When you guys watch him play, the amount of touchdowns that he accounted for now, you know, he did lose his his one of his best receivers to the NFL. But I'm also interested, you know, how some of the younger guys are. LSU always does a great job with recruiting. They usually always have, you know, one or two really good receiver so you know I am really interested to see how Daniels does this year and the last one to me is Michael Penix from Washington State he's a lefty usually I don't like too many lefties but when you watch this guy play when you watch his ball spin the guy is is hard not to just you know sit down on like I, I like to call him like you know the Pac-12 at night um, 11 10 30 at night I'll sit up there and I'll watch him play and you know sometimes I stay up to one or two which I probably shouldn't but he, he's, he's a very exciting quarterback and to me those are my top five the next five are going to be guys that I think that are going to explode this year. So, number one, I think Tyler Van Dyke will. Dawson runs a similar offense to what Lashley runs, and so I think the similarities will really, really help Tyler Van Dyke this year. The next, like I said his name earlier, Kyle McCord for Ohio State. Ohio State has a ton of receivers, a ton of athletes, really good running backs, a really good offensive line. So if this guy can just distribute the ball, you know, throw some good, accurate passes down the field, I, I think he's going to have a really good year. Next is Travis um, Jordan. Florida State, not the biggest Florida State fan, as you guys know, but that guy really surprised me last year. He he looked like he was able to stand in the pocket a lot more, seemed like he understand touch a lot more. He seemed to understand what I like to call KYP, which means know your personnel. So there was times where, you know, he was smart to throw the one-on-one -on -one matchups with Johnny Wilson and throw him a good catchable ball. 
And then the last one, I said his name earlier again, but my quarterbacks is Jalen Milrow. And when, when I watch this guy play, I think he's really, really good. And I think he has a chance if he can beat out Ty Simpson because of his athletic ability to actually have a big, big impact here, potentially beat Georgia. So now we're going to go over, you know, some of the guys that I know some of the Miami fans aren't the happiest about. You know, there were there there were two really guys that, you know, some of the fans were a little upset about. You know, we're talking about Judd Anderson. I think the kid's good and we're about to go into his film so we can kind of talk about it. So let's get it. So we're going to start with Judd, 6'6", 225, 2024 kid. So first off, the guy's tall. He does have good weight. Like this is this is a college weight. Yes, I know his height. So when you're talking about a guy that's 6'6", in, in high school, a junior that's 225, you can probably get him to 235, maybe even 240, and he'll still be able, you know, to be mobile. You know, a lot of times when you get guys this big and this tall and with his athletic ability, sometimes they even transfer over to tight end. But, you know, I think this guy is a quarterback. And so let's go watch some of his film and we'll kind of break it down. So the first thing that I see, one, I love that, you know, he does a good job of having his shoulder slightly lifted. What that tells me is, is that this angle, of the ball should be high. If my shoulders are flat, I'm thinking more of a deeper ball. Now I have to change, you know, kind of my arm angle. So my arm's going up because my shoulders are flat. This at least lets me know that he understands some type of trajectory. And, and you, you'll see that more often with, you know, a really good, accurate, deep passers that he starts to tilt his front shoulder up so that his shoulder kind of sets the height of the ball. I love the finish by him, too. If we go back, when you watch him finish, he does a good job of dragging the toe, which I think is really good. Keeps you connected to the ground. So you'll kind of see that toe kind of drag right there so you guys can see it. So I think he at least understands the fundamentals. I don't know who his QB coach is, and I think, that, you know, there's probably some ways that he can get help. But when you just talk about, you know, being able to throw a good ball, throw accurate, understand, like, you know, where your shoulders need to be, your, your feet need to be behind your target, he at least understands the fundamental of it. I like this one moving up in the pocket. Those are dart. I mean, like the guy's 17 years old. He's still going to have time, you know, to grow, get smarter, get stronger, especially now that, you know, he's probably going to get recruited more. So he's going to talk to more offensive coordinators. So he's going to learn more offense. He's going to learn more defenses. You know, I think that it, it, at least for me, you know, I love playing quarterback, but until you really get that first offer, it's almost like you play the game of football because you love it. And then once you start getting those offers, it's like, now I know I really have a chance. So let me, you know, start really digging into the game. And I'll say it's a little different for me. You know, I was a two-sport athlete, so I don't know whether I was going to play baseball or football. But I would just say that I definitely getting that first offer definitely, you know, um, rejuvenated me and or, or really confirmed my thoughts that, you know, I had the ability to be a D1 quarterback. So, you know, this kid's definitely building some steam, and I'm super interested, you know, to see how he progresses. I'm definitely – this is definitely be a kid that I watch, you know, over the next couple of years. And, and I know that ball right there – to me, it was a little bit underthrown. See, I like that ball. It has some good touch. Shows you he has arm strength. You know, and like I said, you, you can look at him. The guy's pretty skinny. Even at 6'6", 225, he's still skinny. Um, you know, with our with Miami strength staff, I think, you know, we can put weight on him and good weight to where, you know, when you talk about the way you throw now, it's all rotational. So it's legs, it's core. You don't really use your arm as much. Um, and, you know, that's really coming from, like, the weight room and really learning how to throw properly, which he, he does have a good base in you know, sound fundamentals, at least for what I would, what I was like right there, that was pretty good. Stay still staying intact, but you know, I think with weight, it creates power. Um, so I am very interested to see, you know, over this next year, especially in the summertime, how much weight does this kid put on? Is he still going to be mobile like that? You know, you don't want to get him too big to where the kid, where the guy can't run. Um, but I am super interested in him. So the next guy that we're going to talk about, I know he has a Miami offer. A lot of you guys like him. We're going to go over AJ Harrison. So we'll watch his stuff together. I liked AJ. I actually saw him in the Miami rivals camp. I can say that he definitely works from fundamentals. He does not have the cleanest fundamentals, but one thing he does have is a really good arm. Seems to have really good instincts. I would say he does understand touch. Like when you guys watch him throw, he definitely understands touch, but there are a couple of things that I will say that, you know, he needs to work on. Obviously every quarterback needs something to work on, but really short release doesn't have, you know, a very windy release. He does try to get the ball out quick. You kind of saw right there that that ball came out a little more sidearm. You know, one of my biggest things, at least for him, is, you know, keeping the same throwing motion, which right there is a really good job. Staying short, compact, ball out, yeah. So I like the kid. I think he's a little more athletic than people give him for, and I think he's a little better passer. You know, I would want to see 
some more intermediate throws. I don't think in college he's going to get this many wide open like goes and posts. But I'll tell you this, if you do get it, you got to take it. So I love that he is at least an accurate passer down the field. Yeah, I like that. That's really good. So I think this is another guy that we could take. I know that there's a lot of hype around him. I know that the coaching staff has been talking to him. So I I do think this kid has a, at least a chance to compete um, with our staff or, or really with our kids. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see what happens with AJ. And the last guy we're going to go over, and this is kind of a sleeper for me, but this is Trevor Jackson. I've seen him multiple times. This guy is really, really good. I think his film is a little bit underrated, especially now when you when you see him throw it out. He is a lot better. He did really well at the Rivals camp. He did really well at the Elite 11 camp. When you, If you guys just go back, like and, and, and mo most kids don't have a base like this, but watch how big – I don't want to say big, but watch how it's, – it's not overly wide, but just look, look how good this base is. Like when you're talking about – like right here, if he had to drop his hands down, down to his knees and basically say, hey, I'm playing you in basketball – he is in a really, really good basketball position. This is what I tell a lot of my quarterbacks. Like at any point, like you got to be able to basically stop and be in a really good position. So I really like this. You know, you can tell he's throwing deep. Shoulders are up. Really good back L and front L. I'm trying to tell you guys, this is a kid that I just saw he got an Arkansas State offer. I think over the summer he's going to get a lot more offers. The guy has a really live arm. He's super accurate. He's, he's a great kid to be around. I think that over the next year, there's going to be some kids that he definitely jumps. When you talk about guys that can move like that, like that, that's pretty quick twitch. And this is Orlando football, which we know how Central and South Florida football is. It's a pretty good conference that he plays in. So I think this kid's going to blow up over the next year, especially because I think he's gotten better. And like I said, I think his film is very, very underrated. Like we'll, we'll go back and watch this. I want to see when he threw this because he one thing that he really impressed me with was his ability to throw – guys open before they got out the break and that was one thing that i'm pretty sure we're going to see here is that this guy's at the top of his route not even out of his out of his break and, and you know trevor's ready to throw so when this guy gets to the top he's already ready look at that this guy's at the top coming down back l shoulders are flat now because he wants to kind of drive this and it's up and over a guy that's i don't know five six yards away i mean that most high school guys aren't making that throw. What they are, they're probably hitting him in the forehead or they're overthrowing him. This is a really, really good pass. To me, this is a college or even NFL kind of throw. You're talking about he has no chance and he has no chance. Um, even if this guy is kind of on his back hip because of the timing that he threw it with, there's no way that corner is going to be able to make a play. So like I said, man, this is a guy that I think is is very under-recruited. You know, if we are going to take a second guy and if for some reason we don't get AJ, I would love to have this guy. I think that – he is going to be a playmaker wherever he goes. I think that he might go to a smaller school like an Arkansas State, you know, maybe a Missouri, a Vanderbilt, somewhere like that. But wherever he goes, he is going to absolutely light it up. And I think he will be, you know, one of the diamond in the rough, one of the kind of mid to lower three stars that to me has a really good chance of competing and starting somewhere in, the, in like a middle to lower power five school. So next we're going to go over my top three freshmen. So my top three freshmen are are really one is Francis Mauagoa. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people are, you know, super excited to see Francis. I think he's gonna do really, really well at the University of Miami. Next, Arch Manning does versus Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers was a five-star. You know, they compared him a lot to Trevor Lawrence when he was coming out. And obviously you have the prodigy of you know the Mannings with Arch Manning coming out. The guy's really good, really smart. You hear Steve Sarkeesian talk about him. And you can tell this guy just loves the game of football. So I think Arch is going to do a great job in competing. I don't know if he'll win the spot, but to me, I think he's definitely, you know, a five-star guy that's in a good spot that has a lot of talent around him that, you know, if he can, you know, just keep being consistent, there is some ways that he can beat out Quinn Ewers. And the last one I've talked about him earlier is Zachariah Branch, the receiver from USC. That guy's fast. When you hear people talk about him, they hear you talk about his speed. They talk about his route running, his ability to make plays. So I think he'll be someone that, is going to have a really good chance to compete this year at USC. So the next topic or the next section we're going to go to is called the professional news. So for this one, it's just some stuff that I've heard about in the pros. So number one, you know, I know that Aaron Rodgers thinks about going to New York Jets, but, you know, I think a good destination for him or Lamar, you know, obviously Lamar has OBJ at Baltimore now, but, you know, a really good destination for Aaron Rodgers would be the, the San Francisco 49ers. You know, they have all the pieces to me. I think they're missing a quarterback. Obviously, you know, Brock Purdy is a really good quarterback. But I think if you have Aaron for two years, let Brock Purdy build, 
trade out Trey Lance, trade out, you know, someone else. Maybe it's a receiver, you know, maybe you do a good job of whatever you have to do. But I think if you add Lamar or even Aaron Rodgers to the San Francisco 49ers, you have a national championship team. They have the defense. They have the weapons. I wouldn't give up Debo Samuels, obviously, but there are some other players over there, you know, with the combination of Trey Lance and some other guys that if you trade it for Aaron Rodgers and give him a first round, which I don't even know if, you know, the 49ers have a first round. So I'm not that tapped in with them, but I know at least from their roster standpoint, if they can add a legit quarterback that is, you know, a MVP or someone that, you know, has consistently played good and can lead them to a national championship or, or really a Super Bowl, I think they're going to have the chance to do it. Obviously, like I said, I like Brock Purdy. There's no knock on him. I just think that he needs a little more experience. I, I, I think he's going to be a great quarterback. I think, you know, he might be, you know, a top five quarterback. I actually have him in my top five. He's number five for me when you're talking about young guys coming up that, you know, I think are going to make a huge impact. But I think, you know, with adding Aaron Rodgers there for one to two years, letting him learn, letting him learn from Aaron. You know, I think last year he kind of got thrown into the fire. I think he did a great job of handling himself and winning. Um, but I think if you're trying to go for a Super Bowl, you can't pass the opportunity up of a Lamar or, you know, an Aaron Rodgers. So next, like we talked about with Lamar, Lamar had OBJ. I think this is a great job all by Baltimore of like, you know, trying to pass the relationship. I don't know if it's necessarily going to work. I think Lamar wants to get paid. And I, and I agree. It's kind of like you have a baby that wants food in, let's say it's chicken or like whatever. And you're kind of, you know, swinging like a little piece of candy in his face saying, hey, I'm not going to actually feed you, but I'm going to give you this piece of candy to distract you. And that's kind of what I feel like they're doing with OBJ. You know, I know that I don't know their financial situation. I know each, each person is different or each each organization is different. But, you know, I mean, he doesn't really get hurt when he's running. Most of his injuries happen in the pocket. The guy, when, when you talk about defensive coordinators that each week when they talk about him, they're terrified. They don't want to play him. They're ready to get that game over with. So I don't know how you don't keep him because I don't know who you have behind him. And if you bring in OBJ and you lose Lamar, like you're done. So very interesting situation. Um, at least Baltimore is trying to, you know, show OBJ or, or really show Lamar that, hey, we're bringing in OBJ you know, to help you out so we can bring, you know, these guys around you. I know they really haven't had um, a, a consistent thousand yard passer or a thousand yard really receiver. You know, most of the time they've had guys in the seven, eight hundred. I know Hollywood Brown had it for one year, but, you know, I think that adding OBJ and, you know, trying to patch it over, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. You know, I really would be surprised if Lamar is like, I don't want to sit here and, and be franchise tagged. So, I think it's going to be interesting. Another thing that I liked in the NFL, though, that I saw was Tua looks like he's gotten bigger. My biggest knock on Tua was never his ability to throw. It was his injury resistance. You know, when he was at Alabama, he was constantly hurt on, like, ankles or wrist or whatever it was. And he had one of the best offensive linemen or really best offensive line period for that, like, two or three years that he played. So, you know, obviously the Dolphins have a good offensive line. They don't have the best. But, you know, the fact that he's putting on muscles and be able to protect themselves more, you know, I'm still worried about his concussions. But – at least when you're talking about someone that that's finally filling out to me and finally putting on the right kind of weight, I think two has done a great job this off season. And also I think that the Miami Dolphins should maybe give DJ Fluker another chance. That guy looked big. That guy looked mean. And I don't think that, you know, if you can give him a low, you know, three or $4 million deal to come in and play for a year or two, like, I don't think that's a bad option. You're talking about someone that fits the size that's played in the NFL that's played in the SEC. You know, I think DJ Fluker really might have a chance to help out the Miami Dolphins if they give him the chance to actually do that. And the last thing we're going to go over is if you guys are Miami fans, I'm going to be in Miami, you know, this week. It'll be super fun. I'm going to the spring game. I'll probably get down there Friday around like, I don't know, 12, 1. Um, probably going to grab something to eat, but I know there's a couple of tailgates I'm going to be at. So if you guys are tailgating, please let me know. I'm coming to say what's up. I'm even going to bring all this stuff. So for the people that don't know, this is one of my companies. It's called Miami Millionaires Club. You can find us at Miami Mills Club um, on Twitter. That at the bottom is my handle. So we sell NFTs and they're digital collectibles. So the, the purpose of this company, and it's one reason why, you know, I'm starting the podcast. You can see Miami Mills actually in this corner in the upper for me, it's my my upper right. But in, in, in the upper corner, you can see that that's one of my companies. It, it is one of my big passions as, you know, mm -hmm. I believe that all student athletes not only should get paid, you know, because they they basically perform professional service. Like people go out there to pay, people go out there to see entertainment. And so not only do you need to understand <clears throat> how to get money, you need to understand where to invest it and, and how to keep money. You know, 
Um, money untracked is money that winds up disappearing one way or another. So, you know, finding them uh, ways, whether it's them investing in gold, them investing in the real estate, them investing into themselves, you know, like buying a mic, buying a camera, buying software to start your own podcast, buying a chair, maybe you buy yourself a webcam, whatever it is. You know, that's one of my biggest things that, you know, I've been working with some people inside the university. I'm actually meeting with them um, this weekend, which is one reason why I'm even going to the spring game about how do we implement this where I can bring in, you know, business owners and CEOs that, you know, are Miami alumni or that live in the city that can really come back and educate these kids, not give them a hoorah speech, not give them, I'm going to make you feel better, say no, like, this is what it takes. This is how hard I work. But now because of that, this is what I make. And then teaching them, you know, tips and tricks, because, I mean, you guys are lying if you think that just having a degree and reading the books is going to get you a good paying job. Like, you got to have connections. You got to be able to think outside the box. You got to be able to, to not be average, not get paid average. Um, and so that's some stuff that, you know, we're really working with people on, especially now when you're talking about social media, such as, you know, right here, what I'm doing there, there's YouTube, there's podcasting, there's Facebook live, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, you know, obviously TikTok's not, you know, a platform anymore. Well, it, it won't be in the next couple of months, but there's so many ways to work a nine to five and make, you know, side income. It doesn't have to be something like this, what I'm doing, it can kind of be whatever, but that's really what we're trying to help kids out with, you know, as they're making, you know, some of these guys are making six, even potentially seven figures while they're at the university. So make your money work for you. Don't, don't be out here hustling and have your money just in a bank account because I don't know how people know, like if, if you do own millions, most of the time they only, you know, cover uh, a quarter million. So if I'm someone that's making over a million dollars, you know how much money I'm gonna have in my bank account? Probably just a quarter million. The other $750,000 is going to be invested, whether it's in stocks and bonds, whether it's in gold, whether it's in real estate, it's not going to sit in the bank where like the bank is taking my money and making money off my money. And then I don't make anything in return. So that's just some stuff that, you know, I'm super passionate about, you know, um, I'm trying to get an episode dropping on Thursday. It probably be till next week. I got a really exciting guest. I am trying to add one more, you know, trying to get David Njoku or Brad Kai on here with one of our boys that, you know, I think when, when, when I tell them the name, they're going to join. Um, thank you guys. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.